Hey guys, welcome back to another Default Cube CG Matter tutorial, and today we are going to be talking about how to do some domino simulations because, I don't know, it's not rocket science, but I just want to go over it. So here is a simulation I made before uh, in preparation for this tutorial. You can see it's kind of like out of focus uh, because I was trying to mess with the depth of field, but that's not really the point. The point is uh, we're going to do some very basic rigid body simulation, and I don't know, let's just set it up. And it's it's a pretty procedural approach to it too. So I'm gonna open up Blender. I'm using version 2.81. You can use any version. Uh, this works like very, very far back, probably like 2.6 stuff. Uh, let's make sure we're in full screen and then we can also delete everything. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a domino and then we're gonna make a bunch of dominoes and I'm gonna show you how to set that up in any arbitrary path for any domino run and then we're just gonna knock them down. So step one, making a domino. How do we do that? Uh, I'm gonna use a cube uh, to start off with, which means we probably shouldn't have deleted the default cube, but that's fine. To model this, I'm just gonna go into edit mode. I'm gonna shrink this down until it kind of looks domino shaped. I don't really know exactly what they look like from memory, but let's say there's something like this. And then for the edges, uh, we can select this loop going along here and then bevel, that's control B, to make this kind of domino E. So something like this, we're gonna make it a bit skinnier. Your dominoes can look something like this or they can just be cubes. Okay, fine. The next thing we need to do is we wanna make sure that before we start duplicating um, this domino, we wanna make sure that this one is ready to go. So that means, first of all, we want it to look a bit better, and second of all, we want it to be uh, resting on the ground, because right now its center is being cut uh, through the ground plane. So first of all, to make it look nicer, let's make this shade smooth, uh, which kind of ruins it, but to fix that, just go to the object, right? Yeah, object data properties, and then in, in normals, make sure to enable auto smooth, which is gonna fix it. It's gonna be smooth here, but also not uh, break everything. Okay, cool. Now to have this rest on the ground, uh, there's a bunch of ways to do this, but probably the easiest is go into edit mode. I'm gonna select the bottom face, Shift S and then cursor to selected, and that's gonna move our cursor to the selected face. Okay, cool. Next, we're gonna set our origin uh, to that 3D cursor. So effectively, uh, origin is now in our selection. And now since our origin is under the plane, it's gonna have some negative value. So let's just bring this up to zero. And that, and, <laughs> and that uh, makes sure that our domino is now resting on the ground. Okay, cool. And now finally, let's just put our origin back. So set origin to, it can be to geometry or center of mass. They're gonna be equivalent in this case. So I'll just do center of mass. Okay, cool. So we have our domino ready. Now, how do we make it go along an arbitrary path? Well, the probably the easiest approach to do this is we're gonna go to modifiers. And then we can add an array modifier. And the fastest way to do that is you just hit A, and that's automatically gonna choose array for you. And you can see that we can, you know, pick a bunch of dominoes and spread them apart, but this isn't a very convenient approach. So what we're gonna do is this fit type, uh, change it to fit curve, which is gonna let us pick a curve and then it will pick how many dominoes we need for that curve. So of course we need a curve. So shift A, curve, I'm gonna use a bezier. Uh, you can use a circle, you can use an angle, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna use bezier. Oh, forgot, uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna generate, I don't know why I couldn't find that word, it's gonna spawn at this cursor. So before we do that, cursor uh, to world origin, and then again, let's add our bezier curve. Okay, cool, let's make this a bit bigger so it's a larger path, and then back in our domino, let's pick the curve that we just made. And you can see that now it picked some number of dominoes. And it turns out this is actually the perfect number of dominoes to fit along this path. And we can change the spread between them. So the bigger the spread, the less dominoes there are. The smaller the spread, the more there are, because more can fit in the same curve. So I'm just gonna choose a nice spacing of around here. And notice that this is a very procedural approach, so we can, you know, if we scale this down, more dominoes will fit in here, etc. Or if we scale up the path, uh, more dominoes can fit as well. Okay, so let's, you know, let's scale up the path a bit. Let's say that's good. And now you're wondering, okay, we have enough dominoes, but it's not going along the path. Okay, that's fine. The way we do this is now that we have enough geometry, 
uh, just add in a curve modifier. So array modifier, then curve modifier, and then select your Bezier curve. So same curve as before. And you can see that does exactly what we wanted to. Now th there is actually a bit of an issue here that we're not addressing. And that is that the curve modifier actually distorts our geometry. It's not very noticeable. But if you look at this domino over here, that's you know in the very bendy area, uh, you can see that this side is thicker than this side. So it's actually stretching our dominoes. And the bigger the dominoes, the, the bigger an issue this is. But in this case, it's not too bad. And we can still edit our path. So let's go to the top view. We can do this kind of very weird looking, uh, it's kind of satisfying to do it like this, but you can see this is a very procedural way uh, to create whatever domino path you want. So I'm just gonna go with something like this, uh, which is similar to the video I showed you in the beginning. And here, here we can really see what's going on. You can see that there's a lot of um, distortion happening in the curve. So to fix that, we can just scale this up to make it less intense of a bend. Okay, or you can just add more dominoes. Okay, so let's say that we are happy with this domino run and you can pick whatever you want. Again, this can even change elevation, but let's say we're happy with this. Uh, you're gonna select your dominoes. We're gonna apply both modifiers, making this a single object, and we can actually delete our curve now. And now we wanna use this to drive some kind of simulation. Okay, fine. So to begin with, we're gonna need a ground plane. So let's pick something like a a normal plane and just scale this up. So all our dominoes are resting on the plane. Notice that they're all perfectly leveled because we set it up that way. That's why we did all that planning. Okay, cool. We're gonna select our dominoes, which we can rename to dominoes. And we can rename this one to ground. If I can spell it. Uh, we're gonna select our dominoes and then all we need to do is in this uh, physics, yeah, physics properties, we're gonna add rigid body which is gonna give it rigid body physics. So when we play it, it's just gonna fall through the uh, ground. Why? Because our floor is nothing. It's not a rigid body, it's not a collision object, so we uh, shouldn't expect anything to happen. To fix this, we are gonna choose our floor, which is our ground, make it a rigid body, and now when we play it, everything is gonna fall, so that's not any better. To fix this, we are just gonna set this to passive. And now you can see nothing happens because the ground is passive, so it's not moving and the dominoes want to fall, but they can't fall through the ground. So that's why everything looks stable when we play it. Okay, cool. So now um, the big issue is that all these dominoes are a single, they're a single object, which means all their physics work as if they were a single object. So we need to separate these. Okay, cool. Uh, how do we do this? We just uh, run the separate command. So either hit F3 or you can hit spacebar depending on, you know, uh, what you have your hotkey set to. So for me, that's F3. Type in separate, and we're gonna separate by loose parts, which is gonna separate based off the islands of geometry, because each domino is separate uh, in terms of geometry from the other. They're not connected. So by loose parts, and you can see we get all these dominoes, uh, which are now separate objects, but they all still have the same origin. And to fix this, and again, origins are very important for uh, physics. They need to be in the center of mass. So to fix this, just go to object, set origin, origin to center of mass uh, in terms of volume. And now you can see each one has its own individual origin in the center, in the center of mass sense of the domino. Okay, now we can play this and again, nothing happens for the same reason as before, but now we can actually drive some kind of simulation. And before I do that, I'm just gonna save this file so I don't lose my progress. So to do this, we need something to knock over our dominoes, or we can use the first domino and animate it falling. But I'm gonna set up a object to do this. So let's do Shift A. We'll do a UV sphere to be our knocker downer. And let's position this at the beginning. I'm gonna scale it down and maybe make it a bit bigger. Not bigger, a bit higher is what I mean. So it hits it from the top of the domino. Okay, cool. And what we need to do is basically animate this. So I'm just gonna put a keyframe, that's I, and then location. And then let's go to frame, let's say 10, and then let's move it so it's intersecting the domino as if it's hitting it and going a bit past it. I, location. So now when we play this, we have our bit of, our, <laughs> we have our animation, but it's not actually doing anything. It's not contributing to the physics. And again, it doesn't have any physics properties, so we wouldn't expect it to. 
To fix this, we're going to add a rigid body uh, to the sphere. And then we can set it to animated because, well, let's do it without animated. Uh, you can see that, first of all, we have the issue that it's falling. Okay, so we set it to passive. Well, now it's just animated, but it's not doing anything. So to fix this, we are going to enable animated. And now you can see that everything is working. So again, make sure that your sphere is set to animated and passive. And you can see that this is working. It's very slow, but it is working. And now most people will probably end, uh, you know, doing their domino run like this. And this is why all the domino runs you see on YouTube look like such garbage. They look like they're falling so slowly, but if these were real dominoes that are like one or two inches tall, uh, they fall much faster. And you can either fix that by making these smaller, uh, which actually has the issue of Blender has some rounding issues then. Uh, it doesn't handle small objects very well with physics. Um, so you can either do that, or you can do the better approach, which doesn't have any of these issues. And to do that, I haven't even said what it is, um, but the second option is we are going to go to these um, scene properties. We're going to go to rigid body world. That is all the, um, this is where all the physics is stored in some sense, and we can uh, manipulate the physics, all the rigid body systems. We're going to take the speed, which is the speed of the simulation, and we're going to bring it up to something like two. And now let's see what it looks like. You can see now it's starting to fall a lot faster, starting to look more realistic. And we can even uh, crank this up a bit more, although if we do it too much, it starts to break the simulation. But now you can see we got a domino run that actually looks somewhat realistic. So here's what this one looks like again. Pretty good, ends on frame 125-ish. And then if we go back to one, uh, we get this travesty. Like that doesn't look realistic. These dominoes would be like skyscraper sized or something to be acting like that. Uh, so let's keep it on three. And if we're happy with that, which we are, we're gonna go to cache. And then we're gonna cache from one to 250. Again, that's baking our simulation for the um, whole duration of the project. And then we just hit bake, which should only take a second. Okay, cool, so now we have our simulation baked, uh, which means that we no longer need our sphere because it's not actually contributing to the physics anymore. And you see that it's still working. And at this point, we've pretty much you know done the whole thing, but I just wanna show you how I set up the render that I showed you in the beginning because maybe you're interested in how I got these multicolor things and how I, I happen to render it very fast. Um, the way we do that is, first of all, I used not Eevee, not cycles, but I used a workbench. I'm probably the only person in the world to use workbench, uh, but I use workbench. Let's go to rendered mode. And then I assign the material based off of uh, random, which gives each object a random color. And then to make this look a bit better, I enabled a couple settings. So I enabled, I think it was cavity, uh, which kind of gives it a bit of, um, I wouldn't say depth, but it really highlights the curvature. And we can, you know, increase ridge, increase valley. Let me zoom in. Not that much, but look at this edge over here. And notice how we are affecting it uh, with these settings. I also enabled shadow. So we get some shadows. And then you can also do depth of field. Uh, if you have a camera with depth of field, that's where I messed up. And also outline. And then I basically just rendered this out. But I think you probably know everything you need to know about setting up a domino simulation. Again, the only thing you need to worry about is this distortion that happens uh, during your curve, which is easiest to see from the top view. Like this domino is very distorted. And to do, you know, that either isn't an issue because your dominoes are so small and far away from the camera that you can't tell, or you need to fix that by making your domino smaller or increasing the spacing or decreasing it. Either way, uh, that's all I have for you guys. If you enjoyed this tutorial, I have a Patreon, which is going to be very helpful for me uh, if you want to fund these tutorials because ad revenue is not keeping me afloat. But yeah, that's everything I got for you guys.